first to some local news, Victorian Premier Dan Andrews' Teflon coating remains intact despite multiple integrity scandals and the state being plunged into record debt. Of course, it helps when you face zero opposition, thanks to the thoroughly hopeless Victorian Libs and the compliant local media. And the news only gets better for Dear Leader, for he's about to pass John Kane to be crowned Victoria's longest-serving Labor Premier. Daniel Andrews' grip on this state is so tight that he has no qualms about jumping on a jet for a secretive visit to a foreign power that poses a significant danger to Australia, a threat so profound that his Labor counterparts in the Anthony Albanese government will be spending upwards of $368 billion for nuclear submarines to provide the nation some level of protection from potential Chinese aggression. But that appears to be of little consequence to Premier Andrews as he this week became the first Australian state or national leader to visit China since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, the origins of which Beijing has worked tirelessly to conceal. And let's not forget, Andrews was the only Australian leader willing to get into bed with the Chinese Communist Party and sign up Victoria to the contentious Belt and Road Initiative. In the end, the federal government intervened to junk the deal, but Andrews remains a favourite with Beijing. And he won plaudits this week for Chinese uh, from Chinese officials, including the vice president of the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries, who was generous in his praise for the firm determination of the Premier himself and Victoria to persist in developing relations with China. This would be the same comically named body that US intelligence has identified as seeking to directly and malignantly influence US political leaders to promote China's global agenda. A 2022 US National Counterintelligence and Security Centre report explains leaders at the US state, local, tribal and territorial levels risk being manipulated to support hidden Chinese government agendas. But then Andrews would have known that the Belt and Road Initiative he signed up to was also designed to expand Beijing's political and economic influence around the globe. Perhaps at some point, the Victorian Premier will explain why he appears entirely untroubled by China's global ambitions, its use of economic coercion against smaller nations, including Australia, and its gross human rights abuses. And it must be noted that the Premier is swanning around China without any pesky members of the Australian media. God forbid there is any level of transparency or scrutiny during this secretive trip. Now, we all know Dan Andrews has fully embraced cultural Marxism. He relentlessly pushes its divisive oppressor and oppressed narratives, pretending to care for downtrodden minorities. And yet he turns a blind eye to the most horrendous systematic abuse of religious minorities happening in China right now. It's well and good to falsely label women's rights protesters as nasty and hateful for wanting to protect women's spaces and sports, but the Premier is curiously silent when it comes to Xi Jinping's regime. I guess it's much easier to punch down with the assistance of the media on a bunch of women than say anything meaningful about China's litany of human rights abuses, from the ethnic genocide of the Uyghurs to the forced organ harvesting of prisoners to the brutal treatment of political dissidents.